Everybody, welcome back to Looking at Hollywood, starring our host Skippy Lowe. Today we have a talent extraordinaire, an international film star. We have the great, the one and only Mr. Cesar Romero. And this is, gives me my opportunity to finally thank him for all the wonderful things he's created that I have been able to enjoy. I mean, without Cesar Romero, I never would have been able to have a Caesar salad. Without Cesar Romero, I never would have been able to stay at Caesar's Palace. And without Caesar Romero, we never would have had Sid Caesar. So why don't we have some champagne with Caesar and Skippy? Caesar, you were telling me before you were, went to prep school. Your family sent you to a prep school? Yes, I went to collegiate school in New York. Right. Riverdale Country School first, and then collegiate school. Uh huh. But uh, my father had lost everything in the sugar market crash, so when I. I didn't go to college, but he got me a job at the National City Bank ah. in Wall Street, and uh -huh. I hated it. You Did know. you really? Oh, yes. Is that where Cesar Romero became a ballroom dancer then? No, I was always a good dancer. I was always a great dancer as a kid. Uh -huh. My Lord, yes. Uh -huh. I started dancing when I was five years old. Really? I learned how to dance with the cook in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> we had a Puerto Rican coach we had for years. She uh -huh. used to love to dance. She used to dance me around the kitchen. Uh -huh. But uh, I didn't. Uh, I, I was on that list, and I went to all the dead parties in New York. You right. know. And I, uh, I had a friend of mine, Elizabeth Higgins, who was a beautiful dancer, and she wanted to dance professionally, and she had the approval of her family. Right. And she said to me one day, she said, let's you and I be a dance team. We can work in all those wonderful nightclubs that existed in New York in those days. Right. So I said, fine, you know, because dancing was fun for me. Mm -hmm. And I used to get together with Liz at night after I finished working at the bank. Right. And then one day she said, look, how much money are you making at the bank? Well, I was only making $17.50 a week. <laughs> And I paid seven fifty for my room, and I lived on the other ten bucks. You could do that in New York in those days, you know. Uh -huh. This is back in 1926. And uh, my family were living in New Jersey. They didn't know what I was up to. So I didn't want to say I'm, I'm only making seventeen fifty a week. So I said, I'm making $25 a week. Uh -huh. And she said, well, if you quit your job, I'll pay your salary so we can work all day and rehearse all day and go out and give some auditions. Uh -huh. I said, fine. So I quit my job and I got a big raise in salary <laughs> right off the bat. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we went out and gave, uh, gave auditions and we got a job in a musical comedy called Lady Do. Lady Do. Lady Do. The star uh -huh. of the show was a female impersonator. Uh huh. Yeah, the, Do you remember the name of that female impersonator? Because it, it was very known, rare those days. He was known as uh, the Creole fashion plate. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. That's an old fact. He, he, he and. Uh, what was his real name, dear? Uh, Carl Norman. Carl Norman. Car Carol Norman. Uh -huh. Carol Norman. Uh -huh. He was a big star in that Right, days. exactly. So that's what started us off, and I danced uh, for the next four years with her uh -huh. and uh, other partners. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got a call from an agent, Chamberlain Brown. Right. You know, he he handled all the big people in the theater in those Broadway days. stars, oh, all yes. that, yes, of course. And he said, do you think you can play the lead in Strictly Dishonorable? <sighs> well, I, you know, <laughs> what could I lose? I said, sure, you uh -huh. know, I never played uh -huh. a part. Uh -huh. And um, he got me an appointment with uh, Chamberlain Brown and Antoinette Perry. Right. You know, at the one, the Tony Awards are named for her. You know? Right. And, and they said, well, what have you done? And I said a few lies, you know, and they <laughs> said, well, you come back tomorrow and and uh, read for us. Uh -huh. Well, I'd seen the play, and I went and saw it again that night. Right. And when I went back the next day, I gave as good an imitation of Carminati because <laughs> I never took my eyes off him, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, I guess it was pretty good because they signed me to a, son a run of the play contract. And I played, uh, I did Strictly Dishonorable uh, on the road for a year. And never studied acting? No. Never, never Caesar studied anything. never did study? No, no, no. Even now, today, even when you were in 20th and all as an actor, never took a lesson? No. Just being yourself? Well, that happens to a lot of people. It a does. lot of people have never gone never to acting schools. Never acting schools. No, never. The girl, the, my leading lady's understudy right. in Strictly Dishonorable was a young girl just starting out on her career, and she went on to become a big star mm -hmm. in the theater and in uh, motion pictures. Mm -hmm. Her name was Margaret Sullivan. 
great actress. Yes. Great. One of the greatest actresses. Valentino. You and Valentino have so much in common because of the Latin lovers. And the well, La Come on, Cesar Romero. Everybody with a they Latin. They compared you with <laughs> Valentino. Well, because a you came to Hollywood, really. But a Latin name. Anybody with a Latin name was compared to, no, to Valentino. No, not just not anyone with a Latin name. You happen to be the tall, elegant, dark, swaggy. Yeah, well, I played a know. lot of mugs and uh, Gangsters. You did gangster gangsters. films. Oh, oh, sure. <laughs> Tell me about those movies, your gangsters, cowboy oh. movies. You did cowboy films? Well, uh, not too many cow... Well, the, you the, did the, a couple. I Cisco did, uh, Kid. The Cisco Kid. I did you had a series. I did si uh, six Cisco Kid pictures. You did six of them? Oh, yes. That was a series, like? Yeah. Saturday afternoons, I used to see them. My mother used to take yeah. them to the theater on Saturday afternoon, oh. Annie, and I used to go see the Cisco Kids. But I, uh, you know, I did my first picture at MGM. Was that your first uh, at the MGM? Yeah, The Thin Man. The Thin Man MGM was your... MGM brought me out here, you know. Right. They saw me in a, a Ben Piazza, who was the uh, casting director for MGM, saw me in a play, uh -huh. and he came back and said, I'd like to make a screen test of you, and I did, and uh, the, result, the result of that test, uh, they, they signed me to a contract. But I didn't last with them at all. It was a contract for one picture, option of another picture, right. you know, option of six months. Because you were a 20th. Actually, you were a 20th well, century Well, I know, Fox, but I was, a, I was a universal for three years before that. Oh, how about the Shadow Labs? Come oh, that was, that was your very first dream? Well, that was in New York. Oh, was that in New York? Oh, that was in New York. I don't consider that at all. Really? I, I was practically practically an extra in that picture, okay. you know. Uh-huh. No, I, I, I don't consider that my, my first picture. <laughs> what did you do at, uh, at Universal? You said you were Universal? Universal, I'd, I played opposite. The, my first picture at Universal was opposite Fay Ray. Fay hmm. And a picture called Cheating Cheaters. Uh-huh. And I did... Uh, uh, Diamond Jim Brady, you right, know, with, uh, right. oh, and I did a lot of corny pictures up no, there. No, you did not do corny Armored pictures. You know what you did? You did entertaining pictures. Today, they're not entertaining. They're, well, th those days, look at Caesar. Think, really. Watch the movies today. You, yeah, you, they, listen, it's very different uh, today. My God, they, the industry is different. Like what? Tell well, me. Well, I mean, the, the studios don't, uh, they, they don't control. System. They don't have a system. Well, of course not. The studio, most of the production in Hollywood today is, is television. Mm -hmm. It's not motion pictures. Motion pictures are done all over the country, all over the world. Right. I see. Hollywood is no longer the motion picture capital of the world. That's... Uh, how, <laughs> how was it for Cesar Romero when you first arrived here in Hollywood, Cesar? You were well, young. You were dashing. But it, going was, to it was wonderful. We were all under contract to studios. And everybody knew each other from all the different studios, right. you know. It was like a big family. Uh -huh. And there was a very definite motion picture colony in those days. Right. And within that motion picture colony was a very elegant society. At all the social functions in this town, you'd see every big star would be there. Mary Pickford, Charlie Chaplin, Douglas Fairbanks. I mean, everybody. Right. Everybody. There was a social thing in Hollywood, and, and uh, you know, Mary was the queen, and uh, mm -hmm. Marion Davies, the wonderful parties she used right. to give, you know, uh, Hearst would come in and, and have the studio uh, 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 turn the two tennis courts out of the beach into anything she wanted, yes. a Spanish town, a circus, uh -huh. I mean, those days are gone forever, but I'm so glad that I had all those years, because it's so very different now, you know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's the, the, you, you don't have that feeling of uh, uh, community together, the right? Pe you know, but it, it was glamour. That was well, real of glamour. course it was glamorous. People and, uh, never used to go was out a, without their makeup or their hair stars. And it was, and, a, and, the, it was very and everybody was dressed properly, right? At all times, never saw jeans, no, ever, or, or sneakers, sneakers and open shirts yes. and. Uh, uh, at openings today, you see people in shirt sleeves and open. That's Come on, movie stars. They wanted to see movie stars. That's what Hollywood was. It was a fantasy land. It was real. It was classy then, wasn't oh, it? Oh, it sure was. Cesar Romero, you go out a lot in this town. <laughs> yes, a lot I do. with Civil Brian every night, practically. How do you do this? What What is your secret, Caesar? Well, this, you're this, not a young man, you know. No, no, you're, I'm, I'm, you're in your what? Eighties. I'm, I'm eighty-five. And he looks marvelous. <laughs> 80, Annie. I'll be 86 <laughs> in four months. <laughs> 86, he's Romero. Why, oh, sure. 
getting back to Hollywood. I've been around a long time. <laughs> yeah, you did a movie I loved at 20th. What happened to 20th? Was, was your first film at 20th? Because I love that studio. Well, my first picture at 20th Century Fox was, uh, my first picture was Zanuck. Zanuck, well, yes. I was. I Darryl. did three pictures for Zanuck while I was still under contract to Universal. Oh, really? He borrowed me. I did Clive of India right. with, uh, with uh, Ronald Coleman and Loretta Young. Mm -hmm. And I did uh, Cardinal Richelieu. I played opposite Maureen O'Sullivan in it, right. you know. Okay. Cardinal Richelieu with the, with the, um, the star, George Arliss, George, yes. you know. Uh -huh. And then I did Metropolitan. Ah. With the Lawrence Tibbet, Tibbet, and I played opposite Virginia Bruce in it, you know. Wonderful, Lawrence and, Tibbet. Uh, and uh, Alice Brady. Uh -huh. Those are all when, when, when Zanuck was making his pictures on the, uh, on the, on the uh, United Artists lot. lot. It was, it was just, uh, it was just uh, 20th Century Pictures. Mm -hmm. Then he moved to, uh, to Fox, and it became 20th Century Fox. And I did the first picture under contract, still at Universal. Right. I, I did a pic the picture called called Show Them No Mercy. It was the first picture on the Fox lot. Who was in it? No, no big no stars. Big stars. Uh, Bruce that Cabot. That was the first film on the lot? Bruce Cabot, Rochelle mm -hmm. Hudson was the, was the girl, uh -huh. Warren Hymer, and, uh, you know, uh -huh. it was a great, wonderful picture. It was one of my favorite pictures. It and then I did, Why still, is that your favorite picture? Because senior? it was a good picture and it was a damn good role. Uh -huh. We were a bunch of kidnappers, you know. In those mm -hmm. days, there, there were a lot of big kidnappings around the country. And mm -hmm. it was uh, very timely. Uh -huh. But then I did, um, I was still w under contract to Universal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I did uh, uh, Clive of India. I mean, um, uh, Willie Winky. Winky, right. right. See, you know, Caesar, I love this lady so much, and I'm sure you do too. You must have great fond memories. Betty Grable. Oh, yeah. Well, love uh, Betty Grable. I, did I grew up as a child I did with her four or five pictures with Betty. You brought a clip, and I want to show you. I'm going to surprise you with this clip. I love this clip. It's great. I love this movie of Betty Grable and you in this film. Well, let's show it. Huh? Give me an Should opportunity to dance in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, let's, okay. Yeah, let's see it. Let's great. see Cesar Romero and well, Betty Grable. All right, let's okay. see it. <laughs> Come in. Vicky. Victor Prince. Why, I thought you were oh, lovely surprises. <laughs> Vicky, Vicky, Vicky. I thought so. Time has only succeeded in making you more exquisite. Thank you. Hi. Hello, Phoebe. You haven't changed. <laughs> Vicky Lane in person, not a facsimile, but the real thing in the flesh. And a couple of pounds too much of it. That was always one good thing about dancing with you, Victor. You were so strenuous, you kept me down to 110. That wasn't the only good thing about dancing with me, I hope. <laughs> uh, couldn't we have a little chat? Five minutes, Miss Lane. Oh, thanks, Tommy. I'm sorry, Victor, but the show must go on. Uh, Phoebe, will you tell Dan I'd like to see him before a number? Oh, Victor. Uh, gosh, it's been almost a year, hasn't it? A year of thinking of you, Vicky. No, there wasn't a day of my tour that I didn't miss you. I kept seeing your reflection in... Louisiana bayous and Arizona sunsets. No one could ever replace you, Vicky. There'll never be another victor in Victoria. Come back, Vicky. Oh, that's nice, Victor, but... I've got the finest hotels in the country lined up, all of them waiting for you. And of course, you know, my heart is waiting, too. Well, I've got 2,000 people waiting for me, so I... Oh, Vicky, I've got a new step. I call it the victor. Oh, it goes like victor. this. Am I late? See, I'm late. Goodbye. Oh, oh, God, wow. Caesar, that's so good. <laughs> Betty Grable, working with Betty Grable. Uh, beautiful lady. Beautiful. Just beautiful. She was wonderful to work with. Was she? she? Yeah, she had a lovely sense of humor. Uh, she was a lot of fun to work Harry with. Harry James was in this? Yes, that's where... Uh, John Payne. John Payne. Oh, Carmen God. Miranda. C Carmen Miranda. Charlotte, Charlotte Greenwood. Oh, Charlotte and, Greenwood, uh, the ladies. Edward the ladies. Everett oh. Horton. Uh-huh. It was a very great cast. Carmen Miranda.